welcome back to my next video. Today's video is part one of the build out of the refrigerator from an igloo cooler. Yes, an igloo cooler. And we're going to show you how you can create your very own refrigerator that is affordable, it's easy to make, and it's easy to repair should it ever break down. So I hope you'll stay tuned and I hope you will subscribe to our little YouTube channel and hit that notification bell so that you know when our next YouTube video is coming out. With that being said, let's get started. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on my refrigerator and I'm going to use an igloo which is a 60 liter uh, container and it's pretty deep. See? So what I've done is using a piece of cardboard, I cut out a section so I could see. Now I've left enough room so that it'll fit inside of here. And then I've taken this and a board which I traced around. So once I had it cut out, I put it on here, kind of traced around it, and then went back over it to really refine my drawing a bit. And now I'm going to use a jigsaw and cut this out, and we'll see how it fits inside the cooler. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to use my table saw, and I'm going to cut it right here, along here just to kind of shorten up this board so that it'll make it easier when I use my jigsaw. So I'm going to cut it there and I'll do the same thing right along this section here. I'll take this top part off so I don't have so much room to work with. Make it a little bit easier when I use the jigsaw. Okay, so I built myself a grid on my board and as you can see here I have got where I'm going to cut these out, right here, next one's up here, and then the next one up here, up here, up here, next one up here, and up here. And in the middle, that'll be where I'm going to cut this out so that you can actually reach your hand in and pull this out of the... Uh, the... Okay, so I've started cutting out the holes as you can see here. I did get a little carried away over here so I'm going to fill this in a little bit and then again I've got a little sanding machine that I can sand these and make them look a lot better. I drilled some holes here to get them started and then as you can see I'm just going to go ahead now with the uh, scale saw and go ahead and cut the rest of these up. Okay so what I did was just put this in here and ran this around and just sanded all these the same way until I ended up with basically it looking like this. So as you can see, it looks a lot nicer now, fits in the cooler great. So this is kind of what the finished product actually looks like. So this is the rack for inside the cooler. So this is the cooler itself. These are the pins. Again, these are just, you know, little brackets. And I glued those on there. And I glued another set over on this side. Here and here. So you can now take this and it fits perfectly level inside here. Just like that. So you still have quite a room, a bit of room above. Now the cooler part is going to go in here. So I'll show you how that goes in a little bit. And you still got a lot of room below there now for your drinks and stuff. So that should work out I think pretty good. The piece of material that my hand is touching is called mica and again I ordered it off of Amazon. It's what the red arrow is pointing to and when I cut the hole out where the little motor is going to end up going uh, 
which contains the cooling mechanism, I did so so that uh, you know it wouldn't harm the plastic of the cooler because the, uh, the heat sink on the cooler gets up to about 90 degrees. That's still cool to the touch, but again, I didn't want it to harm the plastic. I have the cooler door open and the red arrows are the voids. So what I did was I used some popcorn insulation and I stuffed that into uh, those different voids where you see those red arrows pointing. And I did that just in an attempt to try to insulate the top portion of the cooler as best as I could. I then took uh, regular insulation, but I cut it down into small squares, and I put it around the edges where you see those red arrows to include a fourth one on the back side of the, of the hole. I then took uh, pieces of fairly hard plastic and I glued those in on each of those sides with some non-toxic glue that I obtained off of Amazon that worked extremely well to basically hold all of that stuff in place. So what I did next was I took and I cut myself a couple pieces of wood that are going to fit actually on top of the cooler as well as a piece of regular insulation that I'm going to place between these two boards. So I'm going to have a bottom one and a top one. So this top one is the one that I'm going to end up putting my thermostat in. And I'm going to just lay that over top of that other one. <clears throat> so I'll show you the, uh, the other one that I built. Now these are just going to be additional pieces of insulation that actually go on top of the cooler just like I built this one here. So I took some uh, just some pieces of plastic again that I purchased at Lowe's I happened to find and I had to take a heat gun and kind of heat up this end in order to get that to bend around like that. But you can see the insulation between those and those are going to be uh, attached to the top of the cooler. I'll have one on one side and I'll have another on the other. And I'm going to close up both of those with pieces of wood just like this one. So there are two wood structures with one inch piece of uh, insulation between them and they're going to sit on top in between uh, these two ends and then I will have the little heater or the, uh, the cooler part that goes in here and I have that mica on there so it doesn't heat up the actual cooler itself. So I took the cooler, flipped it upside down, so it's sitting on its lid at the moment, and I wrapped the cooler with Reflectix the first time. And then on top of the Reflectix, I took one inch piece of insulation and went all the way around the sides. And you can kind of see the screws and you can kind of see where the Reflectix, now I'm gonna fill that in with some additional Reflectix. And you can see I even left the handle on this because to take off the handle, I would have had to destroy the cooler. And so I did as best as I possibly could to fill in any holes. And I'm gonna come back and refill in these other places on the side with some additional insulation. Once I had that, uh, that green insulation wrapped all the way around the sides, I took my Dremel and I wanted to make sure that it was completely level. So I just took this and I put it in here and I cut off all these edges just to make the entire thing completely level. Okay, so as you can see, <clears throat> I've gone ahead now and just kind of leveled that out a little bit more as well. Nothing too extravagant. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the Reflectix on the bottom <clears throat> and then I'll end up wrapping the entire thing in Reflectix as well. Okay, so what I've done is I've now built kind of a structure, as you can see, around this, both on top as well as on the bottom. I then use these little L brackets here and up on top in order to connect these two. So what I'm going to do now is I have some a little distance between here and the Reflectix. So I'm going to fill that in now with another small amount of styrofoam. So I've taken some one inch styrofoam and then I have cut that styrofoam in half 
in order that I can put it in between the spaces. So this is what it looks like just prior to putting on the sides. So I put on some more Reflectix. So you can see some areas here where the Reflectix just fit in perfectly. Over here on this side, this is bending out a little too much. But when I put on the, uh, the siding, it's going to fit perfectly. So some spots I put the Reflectix and some spots I did not. This gives you kind of some idea of what that looks like before the siding goes on. And this is what the siding will end up looking like once it's on there. At the same time I was doing the actual uh, cooler itself, I was also working on the cabinet. So you're going to see a small drill and then a slightly larger one. And the holes that I've actually already drilled, and those are going to be where the skateboard um, bearings that I'm going to be using are going to end up going. <clears throat> so I took a small drill once I got everything measured out and I just went ahead and put a small hole uh, where you see those larger holes and I'm going to flip the board around and you're going to see why because I countersunk the holes just as I have done in other videos. So I just used this drill and then you know made the small hole and I'll flip the board around and then I use the other countersink drill. I then used one of these drills to basically drill out these holes. You can see here. So these just drill out these nice round holes with this type of a drill. Once I had those drilled out, I then used a 15 16 inch drill, which is the size of the bolts that I'm using, and I went ahead and drilled out this hole. So each one of these holes I then drilled out. So on this side, I have these now all set for the skate bearings, which I'm going to bolt into this board, and I'll show you how that's done. Okay, so once I had all of these drilled out, I then used an oversized washer, such as this one, the bolt to go through the hole, and a nut that goes on to the bolt. And what I did was I simply put these in here, and you'll notice that these have kind of a little square look to them. And the reason for that is I then flipped this around, putting this on the other side, and tighten the nut, the nut up so that it was nice and tight to make these pronounced little squares. Because at the end of the bolt, you'll notice it has what looks like a little tiny nut on there, right? And what that does is that sinks that below the wood. So now I can fill this with putty for each and every one of these, is what I'm going to have to do with some type of wood filler. And then I'm going to sand that all off, and that way it'll be nice and level. And I was going to use these on the other side for the, uh, for the bearings. I'll show you how those are set up. So what I have is you'll notice these are all kind of an equal dis uh, distance apart. And as I got up closer to the front of the cabinet, where I'm going to pull my refrigerator out, I, I made like four of these, and that's because there's going to be more weight as you pull it out. So I wanted to give it some extra strength. And you'll see in the finished product how that works. <clears throat> okay, so I went ahead and sanded this, which was, and then put on some stain. Uh, it looks nice, but kind of a dumb move on my part. And the reason I say that is because, you know, I need to have these bolts in here. And then I need to have the nuts and the, uh, the bearings on the other side. So, and then I'm going to fill this up with uh, wood putty filler and then sand that off again. So, kind of a waste of my time there. So, don't follow my lead on that one by any means. So, what I'm going to do now is I put the, uh, the bolts through here. And you may have to go underneath here and turn these as you're putting them in to find this little square part so that uh, bolt sinks down 
inside of the holes like these are. Okay, so I have my uh, my washers here. Now you're going to see it says on that box one fourth. So what I did is I actually put these in a vise and then drilled them out to five sixteenths. And the reason for that is because on here this little metal part that goes around this inner circle these fit almost perfectly and those are what I'm going to use as my spacer that way the bearing continues to move around in a circle so I didn't want to get anything bigger because <clears throat> I was fearful that you know it may ride on this outside circle on this outside circle part here preventing that from actually spinning around so I did get some smaller ones these are the nuts you'll see they're 5 16 number 18 and these are the bearings I got from Amazon I brought 50 of them I think they were like 12 or 13 dollars maybe so so what ends up happening is you take one of these washers which acts you take one of these washers which acts as a spacer and you put it down there you take the bearing and you put it there and then we can take one of the nuts stick it on here and I'm going to go ahead and tighten that up and even after I tighten that up this will still be able to turn so I really tighten that up a lot I mean like literally you can hardly turn it now and this wheel still freely turns around in a circle so just using that spacer and I didn't have to use another washer again trying to conserve the amount of money that I'm actually spending on this I just uh, so we got uh, 11 of the bearings on there and we got each of one of those will now have a nut so I'm just going to go ahead and screw on a nut on each one of these so I'm going to talk a little bit today too about uh, different types of grinders so this is a very nice rigid battery powered grinder but it's meant for one thing to grind and to uh, actually sand with so you'll notice that this is kind of an indented one it has a small ridge on top of it here kind of hard to see a little better to see it that way so uh, it can only do that it cannot cut this is a cutting wheel and right on it you'll see where it says type 1 cutting wheel which is right here this cannot be used on a grinder such as this one if you do you're going to hurt yourself right it's not meant for that uh, so you're going to have to get probably an electric one such as a DeWalt which is what we're going to be using today which is this one here so this DeWalt will take a type 1 type grinding wheel and it's a cutting wheel actually you'll notice that it's much thinner than what this one is see the thickness on there is quite substantial so grinding wheel and that's what this is for as well as for sanding this is a DeWalt this is actually meant for actually cutting stuff okay so what I'm going to do is I'll be cutting this right off here and I'll do each one of these separately unfortunately I'm by myself so I can't have someone film it but whenever you're using a grinder like this always make sure you're wearing some kind of protection for your hands and always make sure you're wearing some type of eye protection. So using the DeWalt grinder with the cutting wheel on it we went ahead and cut off those bolts and then used the rigid grinder to grind down the remaining portion of the bolt so that they were level with the nut and each one of those bearings turns just fine and each one of those bolts were really really tight enough so that it sank the bolt down underneath the wood on the other side so I'm going to go ahead and just put the railing on and as you can see uh, the railing uh, moves just fine within all the bearings so this is the railing that we're going to end up using on the actual box that we used when we constructed the refrigerator so I hope you'll tune in next week when we continue working on this cabinet and the refrigerator so that it can be used inside of our utility trailer to keep our food cooled down. I hope you got something out of this video today. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. Please remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you'll know when our next YouTube video is coming out. 
And I hope that I inspired you so that you can inspire others because that's what learning is all about. Inspiring others to learn so others can help themselves. This is the Beat Harvest Man, signing off for today.